Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everyone, this is Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. This is episode 77, and it's been a wonderful week. Uh, weather down here in Arizona has been a little on the cold side. We actually had to wear sweaters. It was terrible. But other than that, uh, the sun came out yesterday. It was kind of pretty, cooling down again, but you know. But today, I want to talk about uh, RV resort memberships and some other great subjects that came up this week. So let's get started. So I had a bit of a shocker this week and I wanted to talk about it. And the results of it is kind of um, half and half. I, I'm not upset, but I am upset. <laughs> and um, it's because I've been through this before and it has to do with thousand trails. So for those of you who have been following Sherry and I on RV Travel Quest, you'll notice that we did full timing before 10 years ago, but uh, we decided to do full time again once uh, once I retired at, at 55. So last year, uh, exactly a year um, ago, we hit the road full time. Now we started living in our RV sooner than that, so we've been in the RV full time for about 18 months. So we thought, since we we're going from Washington State down to Oregon and kind of shuffling along there, and it was kind of winter time. Uh, and working our way down south, uh, that maybe after talking to a couple of channels, and I think we were talking to Kaylee and them from uh, Freedom Theory and stuff, so we kind of like, all right, let's check into the Thousand Trails uh, program, see if we can save a little money, because especially when you're jumping from uh, site to site, um, you know, you're looking at 30, 40 bucks a night unless you've got some kind of special membership. So, we called uh, 1,000 Trails, and we got a, uh, a zone um, membership, but we also got what's called a two, the price of two zones for one. And so uh, that was perfect for exactly what we were doing. That would cover Northwest and down to Arizona. So uh, we got that, uh, paid about $600 for it, and we used it um, a couple of times. Um, in the winter and I the places we went some of especially in the northwest I think the one uh, up by uh, Bremerton uh, not Bremerton uh, Billing um, Mount Vernon area uh, and then uh, there's another one uh, above that over by uh, La Conner uh, both of those were uh, <laughs> not the best uh, RV parks I've ever seen, and there were kind of mud holes uh, during, you know, especially it was like January, February. So it wasn't impressive and stuff, but um, anyway, we did use it uh, on the way to um, the Washington coast, and we used it by uh, Long Beach, and we used it at Seaside. And Seaside was a nice park. And the further we got south, the less we had uh, the opportunities to use it. And, uh, in, in fact, if you, for your first 30 days of staying at any uh, of those parks, it's free. And after 30 days, you have to pay like $3 a night, which still was a pretty good deal. Sherry and I never made it to that. And I'm not complaining. Um, it's just because um, we knew we didn't want a full-blown membership because we knew that this would just be temporary. And we just don't know what the future is going to bring. And I'm really glad we just did a one-year membership. Did we get our money's worth out of it? Mm, we might have come close. We might have just broke even. So I can't complain too much. But um, for those of you who have been seeing me uh, communicate on one of the groups on Facebook, I think it's 50 and RVers, 50 and over, uh, I wrote a statement in there to find out if this has happened to other people. And what happened to me was our membership um, was over in December, which was last month. And so I didn't renew it. I didn't call and say I want to do it another year. And I 
don't recall seeing any emails, but I get a lot of emails, so I could have easily missed it. So Sherry and I are, here it is January, a month later, are just recording receipts and stuff like that. And she goes, we've been getting charged by Thousand Trails for 50 some odd dollars a month, which if you take that amount and times it by 12, actually equals exactly how much our membership was last year. And Sherry and I like, we didn't renew that. And I certainly don't recall them ever having monthly payments. Um, in fact, I might have even opted in for that last year if they had monthly payments because we didn't know how long we need in the membership. So it kind of irked me. And then, of course, I put that on Facebook. I wanted to find out if anybody else had this problem. And some people say, well, you got to look at your contract. It says that they could automatically renew. And it's like it's probably in there, and I didn't go back and check on that. But I'm going, I'm sure that's probably what's going on. And it's one of those, like, I have to call them. I can cancel it. And um, I'll be out those two months of uh, membership, which I had no intention of using. So um, anyway, it was kind of anguish. And the reason I kind of, I, I, I'm not surprised because also 10 years ago, we we're actually in what's called the KM Resorts program up in Washington, and that was disappointing. Uh, and we had a full-blown membership. We probably paid thirty-five hundred dollars for some uh, for that, and that um, f we definitely did not even come close to breaking even on that. We did go to some of the parks; they weren't too bad, but uh, uh, we were real leery about doing thousand trails. Uh, after what happened with Cam Resorts. And, and of course, when we bought an RV up there in Washington over in um, Bremerton, it's not Bremerton, <laughs> sorry. Um, ah, okay, it's, I got it. It's Burlington. <laughs> Burlington Camping World is where we bought our RV. And of course, um, uh, when you buy an RV there, you start getting bombarded by Cam Resorts to join their program. And we actually, since we were waiting to get our RV in the first place, went to one of their presentations up at Birch Bay. And I think we were supposed to get some kind of gift. That never happened. And all it was was hardcore salesmen trying to get you to sign up for um, their uh, membership, which was like three to five grand, something like that. And they, you know, have you sit down, go through a presentation. And it was like, Nothing's different. It you know, felt like a scam. Um, and I can't say it is because they're, they're legal and, they're, and it's not a scam. But boy, it's they're all kind of all these membership things seem to have the same kind of uh, atmosphere about them. So I'll just leave it at that. So anyway, so we're uh, disenchanted with RV park or resort memberships in the first place. So anyway, so. The Thousand Trails felt a little bit that way, but I got to tell you, I got to give them a thumbs up as I called them uh, the next day. I got on the phone and uh, I was ready to record it for RV, for the radio show and everything. Um, the gal uh, asked for my number, uh, membership number, and the night before I did send an email to him saying, please stop our membership and please we want to charge back on those two months. We didn't authorize that. At least we're not aware we did. So anyway, I called them up and she looked at the account and I told her I was trying to cancel my account. We just wanted a one year thing. And I, and I, I'm okay with the one year thing, not a problem. And, uh, it's you know, suited its purpose. And she actually read to me. She goes, uh, yeah, I see it right here. We did cancel your membership, and we are doing a chargeback on those two months we charged you, without even me really even going any farther than that. I was actually, for <laughs> amazingly, I was uh, speechless. Uh, they followed through. They did exactly what I wanted them to do. I did get my well, basically a hundred dollars back that I didn't want them to charge. It's hundred bucks to a hundred bucks, people. And they were professional and polite. So I got to leave it at that. Um, as far as my experience with them, uh, and just doing the one-year annual membership worked fine because we knew that Sherry and I would be traveling a lot 
our first year. Now, obviously, for those of you who have been following our channel, you know that we've been holding fast at one place in Arizona. Makes no sense whatsoever to have a membership like that. Especially in Arizona, they don't really have a thousand trails. They have encores. Uh, but uh, And we're at an RV park we really enjoy. We are spending a lot of money. We're spending well over $900 a month for our space here, but it's kind of living that we like. We're out in the outskirts a little bit. We're not in those big mega RV parks with all the park models in there and, and this is a zoo-like atmosphere. So we're really happy with what we got. So that's been our experience. I would urge everybody that if you're doing the Thousand Trail membership thing, that don't do what I did. Don't assume that when the membership's over with, is over with. Because I have lots of things that I'm members of. For example, um, like audio and video clips or B-roll. We get a membership. We get free. Um, well, not free. Uh, we get a membership that we pay yearly. And if that membership expires, I can't get into the account anymore until I renew it. So you tend to kind of think that's how things work. So when Thousand Trails came up, I was like, I'm just not going to renew it. And uh, apparently they go, well, we're not going to let you do that. We're going to keep charging you until you call us. <laughs> so, all right, <laughs> I guess live and learn. So if there's something to learn out of all this, if you have a zone membership with the Thousand Trails and you don't think you're going to use it the following year, I highly advise that you just get on the phone and tell them you'd like to cancel it. I can guarantee you that when you get back on the phone maybe later and you decide you want to do it again that those little specials or little hot things if you just ask about them I bet you you could get them with, like for example two zones for the price of one just tell them well I might do it if you give me that and then go oh whoa and they'll go well let me talk to my manager and they just put you on hold and count to ten and come back oh yeah I guess we can do that <laughs> so <laughs> yep anyway so uh, lessons learned on that so to take this a little bit farther, because I posted this information on a Facebook, I thought, well, I'll kind of take the data that I get and uh, see what people are saying about Thousand Trails and, and their experiences. And I have to say it's about 80% of the feedback has been kind of negative and 20% have been either neutral or very positive. So the things that, that seem uh, to be really stand out is a lot of the resorts are old and broken <laughs> and uh, run down. Somebody was even telling me that they actually did a bankruptcy and had to recover from all that many couple years ago. And, and so um, they've been really um, not investing a lot into their parks. I don't know if that's an excuse or not, but um, that's kind of been our, Sherry and I, we had the same experience. The Washington parks up north seem a little rundown and uh, a little choppy, you might say. But the people were nice, and um, I mean the the, the park suffices um, when it's off season, which in, in Washington there's only like three really good months. But uh, uh, you should still have a pretty clean park, and so like two up there in the north, they're really muddy. And that would, could be fixed by either paving or a lot of gravel or something like that to improve that situation. Because guess what? It does? In, rain, in, in Washington, it rains. <laughs> it's just how it is. Uh, even I think uh, I've, uh, the Ocean Shores parks and stuff are kind of old too and, and along the Oregon coast. And uh, the other thing I was getting on the feedback, you can't necessarily get hookups. They might be able to get you in. But they say, well, sorry, we can't give you any hookups. And it's like, well, why the heck did I get a membership in the first place? Um, however, like uh, we went to the Seaside Park. Uh, that was a charming park. And it was very clean, a very professional group. And I was very happy with that. The other thing I found out in many of those parks is they didn't have internet except at the community center. And so... Uh, which we are able to kind of overcome that problem because we have Wi-Fi Ranger. So we just make sure and kind of like, can you make sure you get us kind of uh, uh, at eye level where we can actually see the building and then I could just get in my Wi-Fi Ranger and tap into their internet from there. And uh, I did that a couple of times that worked just fine. Uh, but most people don't have Wi-Fi Ranger. So 
If you want to use the internet, you got to go to the community center. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's a chance to get out of the RV and socialize too. So it all depends on how you feel. Like, you know, for us, I'm making videos all the times and obviously podcasts. Uh, we're uploading and stuff all the time, so we want good internet. I did receive a message from a Karen Grove up in Washington. Said she's been using the the Thousand Trails for about 12 years, and uh, she's been very satisfied with the uh, membership and the service. And uh, she, I guess, has something to do that she bought her membership before the annual type of membership, and so she's kind of grandfathered into a program that seems to be working for her. So that's good news. I think one of the biggest comment that I was also getting on the Facebook uh, group pages was is no space or available for members. And so what it sounds like in, in, in the comments is like they've sold so many memberships that when you do try to make a reservation, and that's what happened to me and Sherry, especially when we got down towards uh, Arizona, uh, we can get in. And it's like, well, why do I even have this? We should have a priority system of how to, you know, getting into these parks. But it sounds like there's just so many memberships that they don't have room available. The other thing I've kind of noticed is when's the last time they added a new park? Are they even looking at new parks to add on to the areas that get overcrowded or get rock solid reservations all the time it would seem to me that that might be a good investment in the future but it just sounds like you know they just keep selling memberships don't really make any improvements and just try to keep selling memberships and now it's overcrowded and we can't get into some of the more popular ones like i was trying to get into cottonwood over by sedona as we're working our way down and we were very flexible we were in las vegas at the time and it's like we can change our uh, our schedule a little bit to try to squeeze in we couldn't even get squeezed in so she and the lady was like, like sorry you got to book much more um, back in a, more advanced than just a few weeks and it's like well okay that's not why i got up i thought the tra thousand trails was kind of designed to help travel along and maybe do 14 to 21 day stays and then keep moving to each moving along but that was virtually impossible the more south we got um, of course, if it was off season, it wouldn't have been that much of a problem. I think this was about the springtime last year, and we couldn't get anything for Thousand Trails to work for us when we started heading south. So, yeah, that was a bummer, and I'm seeing that as a general comment that it seems like that um, they just oversell, you know, oversell the memberships, and the RV parks are just not big enough to, especially in most in popular areas, to sustain all their members. So what I've got out of all this is, is it's good for some, not good for others, and some are definitely disappointed. And the best thing I can suggest, and I'm going to talk about this in the next uh, module, is should you or shouldn't you become a member of an RV park or resort community? So it's been safe to say from the feedback and everything we saw about a thousand trails and uh, there's other programs out there cam resorts up in uh, uh, Washington I, I particularly not impressed with that group but anyway I guess it really comes down to your planning and what you're gonna do in the future so for example last year Sherry and I knew we were going full-time and we we're going to work our way down south and so it made absolutely uh, good sense to look at membership sites to see if we can save some bucks. I don't care if you make a lot of money or a little bit of money, whatever. It's always good to save some money if you can do it. And, uh, you know, if you really start adding it up, um, if you're paying 30 to 40 bucks a night to go to an RV park or resort, um, that can add up. And, of course, then you'll get the uh, other uh, debate of, well, you just need to boondock more. Well, uh, Sherry and I, and I, you've heard me talk about this a lot, I just, I don't, I'm just, because, just because I'm an RVer doesn't mean I want to live like um, uh, a gypsy. I don't necessarily want to park on the side of the road. I don't necessarily want to be in um, uh, state parks and stuff that may only have one or two uh, RVs in it. I don't feel real safe. I certainly don't want to sleep overnight in a, a truck stop. 
I would never even consider staying at a uh, rest stop. And um, I have tried the Walmart scenarios and stuff, and, and uh, that was fine. But still, it's like, really? You wake up in the morning and you're in a parking lot? And uh, anyway, it's just kind of strange. And, and you're limited to putting your slides out and things like that. So um, for us, I wanted to make sure that we still had facilities that we felt safe or secure. The Thousand Trails do have a great um, security kind of system. It's not perfect, but they have a gate system when they give you a PIN number. And, uh, you know, it might, it might deter a few folks that are uh, evil <laughs> from uh, dealing with you. That's also one of the reasons why we put an RV lock in our RV, and that's why we uh, sell them with a discount on our site. So, anyway, security to me, keeping my wife safe, um, is important and my pet safe too so uh, so it made sense so we if you think you're gonna travel and bounce around a lot and we knew we'd bounce a lot around a lot the first year or, or at least the first six months um, the a one year annual membership that we got with thousand trails uh, worked and I can honestly say that I think we made a may have got our money back but we didn't benefit out of it and so that's all right that worked out great so for four months or so i spent you know i i will look at it as i paid six hundred dollars um heck in this rv park i'm in right now i pay up to 900 a month so that was a good deal so i can't complain on that so i i gotta admit it's it really got distraught and it really got angry as we got more down south and i couldn't get into thousand trails just for a couple of days um, was a little irritating and so I ended up going to RV parks near the same area that could get me in and I didn't mind actually paying the full price I just wanted to stop over and pace an area or something like that uh, in Arizona and I tried to use the cottonwood and I couldn't get in and I was just like ugh and uh, I just um, wish that my membership was more powerful that, that I could actually bump someone or actually get into the sites because I'm a member but uh, that's not the case so uh, getting back to your RV travels are you going to bounce around a lot well then uh, uh, for a good example the uh, uh, freedom theory group um, uh, Josh and Kaylee they uh, are very comfortable from jumping around uh, to different spots and uh, Kaylee's husband has a job where as long as he has good internet they're pretty good much good anywhere so it's turned out to be a really good program from them and we talked to them and they actually got a uh, a full membership with them uh, and so they uh, actually get even better benefits than me and Sherry did so uh, that's a great example where it would work out good <laughs> but if you are a snowbird uh, going from one spot to another say Washington down to Arizona or Yuma or something like that not necessarily going to work out to be the kind of program you want and of course a lot of these RV parks will have discount rates for you if you're doing monthlies anyway so uh, having a membership may not pay off to you whatsoever unless you're a grandfathered in some of those memberships uh, tend to be uh, may have some benefits but uh, generally speaking <coughs> um, you really have to define year to year what your purposes are uh, going to be in RVing and traveling and buying one of those full blown packages um, depending on your age and things like that may not really make sense because you may do hardcore traveling for a year or two and say okay I've had enough of that I'm going back to a house or I'm, maybe you're just traveling and left your house and rented it or maybe you have a couple of homes and one of them you're going to move into or maybe you're going to sell off everything and buy a home in your favorite area and call it good for the rest of your life and maybe RV you know do extended RVs it's so different for everybody so you really 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 <laughs> need to analyze every year what's going to happen and, and uh, what you're going to do in your RV travels and Another big factor is, of course, your age and your health. You may find that you're traveling and having a good old time, and pretty soon you realize uh, you've got a health issue and you need to stay put. Maybe you have 
treatments and things like that. Uh, a lot of people come down to Arizona here to enjoy some of the, um, well, not enjoy, but uh, we have some really good medical clinics here and stuff to support cancer treatment and things like that and special needs. And uh, they'll come down in their RV to get their treatments and maybe down here for a month or two just for that purpose. And, of course, the other argument is, well, boondock more. <laughs> live in Walmarts. Live in truck stops. <laughs> or all the above. And, uh, yeah, power to you. Like, again, I'm more into safety and comfort. And um, maybe it's a ego thing or something But for us. But to be bragging about that I got to live in a parking lot of a Walmart or a, uh, a truck stop. Um, if my parents were still alive, they'd be turning in her grave. <laughs> it's like, really, you're, you're taking your wife into truck stops and you're living in Walmarts. Um, boy, son, you've really done well. <laughs> I don't know if it's really like that, but anyway, um, uh, that's my problem, not yours. So anyway, um, there's a lot of couples that are all, uh, enjoying the traveling, keeping their costs down, and avoiding and mem even getting a membership at Thousand Trails doesn't necessarily fit their budgets. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, they're out there just trying to enjoy life, live for the now, and uh, keep their costs down. And, and, you know, with an RV, you can keep that overhead down, especially if you're doing some boondocking and maybe uh, uh, utilizing BLM land and places where you can stay 14 uh, days for free and then you have to move to a new location um yeah i mean uh then definitely uh these rv parks and resort memberships are probably not in your best interest so sherry and i were having a discussion uh just a day or two ago because we we're talking about you know what are some of the things i want to talk about on a radio show and one of them, in fact, I was just looking through the uh, Facebook. It's not hard to find subjects. <laughs> so, anyway, there's a, a caption in there of somebody uh, driving an RV. And they're going down a very scenic road. And they go, boy, this is beautiful. And there uh, isn't a car in sight. But behind the RV is like a 100-car pile, you know, uh, lineup behind him because he's going so slow. And I got Sherry and I to talking about... Um, when you're driving are uh, on freeways and uh, and also like in Phoenix, there's a lot of three lane roads here. Do you drive on the right hand side in the slower traffic or drive in the middle lane? And how often do you actually use the passing lane? So here's what I've learned, um, and I'm sure it's different for everybody, but. Yes, it's very true. If you stay in a right-hand lane, you're subject to, you need to be alert. Why? Because of merging traffic. That's where you're going to be braking and slowing down a lot as you come to different exits that are coming, well, not exits, but uh, entrances of cars coming onto a freeway or highway. Um, and so if you're alert and on top of things and you know you're a slower vehicle, um, I've used the right-hand lane a lot, and especially if I know that in a few miles away, I may be exiting to the right, and if you get into traffic, some people are just not going to give up the lane to let you move over to the right, and it's terrible, and uh, you really, that's why it's really nice to have a second pass you know, a passenger in your RV that can also do that look behind you and see if there's somebody in your uh, um blind spot of your vehicle or your RV so when you do move to the right or even if you have to have them open a window and wave to the guy and say back off we need to move off to the right uh, so yeah it's a real debate and it's definitely stressful and uh, depending where you're at um, the problem here in Phoenix is if you drive in the center lane it seems like Phoenix people seem the, uh, that the passing lane and the center lane are for fast vehicles. And, but in the third, you know, outside lane, um, especially if you're driving through uh, Phoenix at all, um, cars are coming and going from uh, um, and turning all the time. 
and it can really put a lot, you know, you have to be alert, you're going to be stopping and going a lot, and if you know that you're going to travel for 5 to 10 miles through Phoenix, and when I say Phoenix, it could be any of the towns, Tempe, it could be uh, Gilbert, it could be Scottsdale, whatever, um, they, I like to stay in the center lane to keep kind of a flow and quit having to break so much, but Obviously, at lights and stuff like that, we don't go as fast, and we also can't stop as fast uh, as regular cars. So um, my biggest fear this day and age is I don't know what it is in the atmosphere, what's changed, but uh, there's a lot of road rage. And so uh, there has been nightmare stories of RVers being, you know, stopping at rest areas and being... Uh, uh, say, uh, <laughs> attacked. Uh, and had you know situations where people are just so much in a hurry, and I just don't understand it. Uh, to me, driving is is, uh, and I think that's age talking. But getting from point A to B alive is a good day. How fast I get there just doesn't matter. And then even when I'm commuting and things like that, if I'm running late, the bottom line is I'm late. Deal with it. I'll deal with it when I get there. Let's get there alive. Uh, but so many people, I don't understand this. This, uh, uh, like, you know, I'll have my truck and I'll be going down like a highway here, and um, and I can actually be pushing seventy in a sixty-five zone, and I will have another four by four on my tail if I'm in the inside lane, um, and uh, yeah, I'm already five miles over the speed limit, and literally pissed off at me big time. And so, you know, finally, when a car's out of the way, I get off to the right and I get flipped off. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. It's just amazing how drivers are just impatient. And it's like, why? No matter what you do, um, it really changes things only by seconds. Maybe, if you're lucky, 30 seconds to a minute will get you there sooner. Is it really going to make that big a difference? And... Uh, and yet, when those people get out of their car, they're the nicest people you ever met. And uh, uh, I definitely learned that o over in um, Connecticut, in the East Coast. <laughs> I have uh, relatives over there who are very nice people. And also are very uh, involved in the community and their churches and stuff like that. So I really put them on a high pedestal. But I tell you one thing, I followed some of them on the freeways over in Connecticut. And they turned into um, uh, demons. <laughs> it was like, wow, man, they were all over. I can make my car perform well enough. And there was a rental uh, to keep up. They were just crazy, absolutely go nuts in a car. And then they get out and it's like, hey, <laughs> How you doing, Rob? <laughs> and, um, and I'm in shock, like, oh, I'm just getting over the stress of trying to keep up with you. Anyway, but do you, um, I don't think, it really comes down to what you think you can handle. Uh, if you're in these outside slow lane, do know that you have to be alert. But you don't have to worry about someone coming off on your right hand uh, side, getting in your blind spot, and you need to move over. However, if you get into that middle lane, um, you could have either road rage issues of people like you're not going fast enough because you can't accelerate as fast and you can't and you probably start braking sooner as the light comes up and uh, uh, you'll get frustrated motorists. Um, and then if you want to and you know your exit's coming up or you're going to be turning to the right somewhere, uh, as you move to the right, you may find some little sports car guy that just won't, is oblivious to the fact that you need to move over, even though you might be a 40-foot motorhome. Um, could be an issue, and that could uh, set off another road rage. And of course, people know you know, get to the point of saying, well, you just got, don't worry about it, just do it. Don't let people upset you. Well, that's great. I'm not going to let people upset me unless they put a 38 in my face and I'm going, okay, I think I'm upset. Um, yes, you do have to think of others. You do need to think about road rage. You do need to think about safety and you need to think ahead where you're going to go. That's why it's always nice to have a co-pilot. Sherry's always telling me in about a mile and a half, you're going to be turning right on a certain road. You're going to be taking uh, three miles. We're coming up to an exit. 
having that warning and having that second set of eyes is definitely nice with an RV. I don't care if it's a motorhome or fifth wheel, whatever, or trailer, whatever you're pulling. It's, uh, it's um, really up to you and what you're up to. If you know you're getting up in age, and I can honestly say we're starting to get there, um, that maybe just staying in the outside lane and dealing with the stop and going, and you can go your own speed without too many people getting too upset. If you're feeling good, you've got a good uh, uh, command center in the front, and you got my wife's over in the, on the uh, passenger side uh, helping me uh, navigate through things. I'll do the center lane. I feel comfortable there. Then I, all I have to really worry about is uh, speed up and acceleration and slow down without getting in an accident and keeping everybody calm around me. And uh, it sounds terrible. You shouldn't have to worry about all the people around you staying calm. But this day and age, especially in Arizona, they're packing and they're crazy. <laughs> and you really need, I know you want to say, well, hell with them. The heck with, don't worry about what they're worried about. Uh, or their concerns and stuff. The problem is it's so rampant that you really do need to think about that. And, uh, of course, I would love to hear your feedback and all this stuff. And so, yeah, so that brings me to the next subject. Please take the time to contact us and send us your uh, comments and suggestions. We love it. Um, if you got something nasty to say, well, at least use it, do it professionally. And, and especially if it's something you're trying to get us to change or do better at, um, uh, professional, you know, well-written, um, non-insulting kind of comments is uh, going to be uh, more proactive than someone just being nasty. So anyway, we love your suggestions. We love to hear your comments. Even we've had people have subjects that they wanted us to talk about. And there's several ways to re uh, contact us. You can get us go to our Facebook page and go up to the top of the page where it says message, uh, messages or messenger or mess messages. <laughs> anyway, uh, click on that and that note will come right to our cell phones. Uh, that's private. Nobody sees that. You can also directly email me at rob at rvtalkradio.com. That comes directly to my phone and private. And you can also go to our website at rvtalkradio.com. Go over to the contact page. Click on that. There's a form there. Once again, that's private. Nobody sees those messages either. And, uh, uh, and then we have uh, the video version of this that we make on YouTube, if you want to leave a comment below there um, and constructive feedback or just tell us your stories, we appreciate it. Um, uh, or bring up something that's happened to you that you'd like us to uh, research or even tell our stories about what's happened to us in certain circumstances, uh, RVing. Uh, please give us a holler. We appreciate it. We also need to take the time to recognize our sponsor. Uh, which is a new company that we start, well, new part of our company called goodmusicradio.com, which is a full time 24 7 uh, radio internet show. It's music, uh, very little talk. It's got uh, greatest hits of past and present. This continuously plays songs that you recognize, songs you can, uh, that you can cruise with. You, it's good if you're in a boat, it's good if you're in an RV, if you're camping, it's just plain old great music. So if you get a chance, go to goodmusicradio.com, check it out. You can actually download an app from the site and put it on your cell phone and turn your cell phone into a little transistor radio. You'll love it. And a good thing about it is you can play it anywhere as long as you have internet. So if you're going from state to state to state and you like this radio station, you can continue listening to it. Unlike regular radio shows that are you know in your car and stuff. So anyway, check it out. Goodmusicradio.com Well, I want to address an article I was reading in the uh, a group... Uh, Facebook page I was watching and it was an article in there or kind of a suggestion or a debate uh, put in by a guy named Vito Limbella. I think I said it right. And uh, anyway, he was saying that a lot of people uh, that are retiring or becoming uh, just retiring, they sell their house, they get in an RV only to find out that when they go to another region to catch up with their kids and stuff like that. Uh, and decide they didn't want to settle down or anything, that the cost of things are so much higher 
for homes and apartments than the fact that they sold their house that they maybe had for 20 years or so and find it almost impossible to get into living in something affordable other than the fact of using an RV. And uh, and then the other thing he was bringing up is the cost of health care. Uh, none of us know, and I don't care what age you are, um, when something could change where health care is a big issue. And uh, we all know it's a big debate about this uh, health care stuff. And yes, I'm not happy with the Obamacare stuff, so I'm glad to see that they're going to revisit that. I hope that it comes out good. Now, I'm sure there's debates about... Well, you know, a lot of low-income people are now insured. Well, that's great, but now our middle class, we're being charged so much that it's uh, astronomical cost, and the de deductibles are way out there, 6000 10000 and uh, costing a fortune. So, yeah, it was a great program for people that, were, that are low-income um, and couldn't get insurance before because, you know why? Because we're paying for it that our middle class and above. And, uh, uh, of course, you can get much better insurance programs through you, uh, through a job or work. Um, and that's exactly what me and Sherry are doing. And that's why we settled down because once we got on the road and we started to uh, dive into, okay, it's time to get Obamacare, oh, my God. It was like, well, I may as well have a house payment, for goodness sakes, for the amount that I had to spend for uh, health care. And Sherry and I have no health issues. We don't even have prescriptions. And we're 55. I just turned 56. And uh, so uh, I'm not happy with it. So uh, the other problem is, is a lot of people have told me that they have to return to the states that they're from to get any major uh, health care uh, issues taken care of. And it's not uh, the health care programs are not supportive for traveling. And yeah, there's different programs out there that are kind of, I say, Mickey Mouse and stuff. Uh, but anyway, so that was one of the things he was talking about. Is uh, uh, and so I can tell you, with me and Sherry, we had full intentions of hitting the road, and uh, luckily we were renting. Um, we had issues in 2007 and 8 where we just don't have a home right now, and so we used an apartment for several times, and that got pretty pricey. And, of course, if I'm down here in Arizona and I go to look at renting a house or something like that, um, man, you, you're looking at, you know, uh, at least 1400 to 1800 a month. And that's a good chunk of change. And, of course, the first thing I'm going to tell myself is maybe you should buy a house because uh, uh, I could get house payments in, in the middle of that number and be very comfortable. And so, anyway, we uh, uh, um to sell off everything, if you're in the position of, oh, I'm going to sell my house and get all the responsibilities, uh, you might want to really think that over, especially depending what region you're from. Um, you can probably never buy a house or live in a house as affordable as the one you own right now when you look at the numbers. And maybe that's okay with you. And the other thing is, like, even when you hit the road, you do not know what's going to happen. You could be, and I've seen it over and over and over again, especially here in this RV park. I've seen it twice where a husband and wife came down their motor, uh, doing the full time thing in their motorhome, and the husband had a stroke and totally shut down the program. And uh, one lady was here for a long time, actually, where a uh, uh, husband had to be put into a. a assisted living who would ever think that would happen she didn't had a house up in washington sat empty for a long time she was all messed up and uh totally threw her off guard and all these hopes and dreams of hitting the road and being on an rv can change in a heartbeat between health losing a spouse uh financial um wipeouts or things like it's just so much that can change so you really, really, really need to think all of this through very carefully. Um, I think the best scenario for most people that are retiring, at least, is to do extended RVing and try to hold on to that home that you've had for several years. And there'll be a time that you just won't be able to travel anymore and be able to go back to your home that you already own and you have a low overhead. 
And uh, but in the meantime, while you're feeling good and things are going good, do extended RVing and and you know do some snowbirding and things like that. And that uh, that seems to be a good formula. And uh, and another comment that he made in this article or post is uh, when we all get our age and stuff, we have our kids out there and they have grandkids, and a lot of us are trying to be closer to our grandkids. And of course, my kids were very worldly. So I have one in Idaho and another one here in Arizona. And uh, my daughter is in Arizona and she uh, uh, pretty close with her mom. So anyway, it made more sense to kind of uh, gravitate towards Arizona. And uh, so uh, the next thing comes up, okay, well, you want the kids to visit you. And so here's the honest truth and sorry about this. And I, I is and I told my daughter this, <laughs> but when I, as an adult, uh, as a parent, you always want to be a model for your kid. And so, if I'm telling my kid you need to work hard, go to school, and stuff, it's it would be good to say that's what I did too. Now, not necessarily I want my kids to be better than me, so um, I didn't get a degree, but my daughter, both of my kids did. Just like typing, I didn't take typing classes. And of course, what do I do all the time? I type all day long. And uh, of course, the first thing I did was make sure my kids went to typing <laughs> in eighth grade. Anyway, so uh, so my daughter will come over here and visit us. And so, you know, we've got a little four-year-old. We've got to be careful on the steps. He doesn't fall. And there's like, this is not child-proof. And I can't have them run around in the park because it is a 55 community and better. Uh, there's also you know, a lot of critters here too. Um, so the first thing I'm telling myself in the back of my mind, and, and I know this is going to irk a few folks, is I'm going, I can do better than this. I can show my grandkids something better than this. And I don't want my grandkids like, I don't want to go to grandpa's RV and stuff. And so... Um, Every time that he comes over, the first thing I start thinking about is, I wish I had a house where he could come and I have toys set up for him already. And yeah, I can't live around my kids and all that stuff. But at the same time, I also like to be a good model for my grandkids. And if I have my son and his kids come down to Idaho, what am I going to offer them as far as a place to stay? I'm not. They're going to have to get a motel or something like that. And yeah, I mean, that's the reality. But I also think about, gosh, wouldn't it be nice to have a house that maybe uh, I could uh, offer uh, to let them stay and visit us? I don't know. So, you know, it's all it's it's all in your head and how you'd like it to be. I don't know. And I kind of laugh. I'm talking to Ray Brown also. I, um, I was telling him I'm actually recording the show as we speak making comments about this um, lifestyle, especially as we're getting older. And uh, um, some, uh, and I just read another comment where people are been RVing for a while and they've got to uh, enjoy it for a few months and stuff, and then they've actually decided on the areas that they drove around where they really enjoyed being, or maybe they got down close to their grandkids or kids and are actually in the process of buying a home. And uh, uh, Sherry and I have definitely considered that, and uh, there'll be more information about that in the future about what we might decide to do. But uh, yeah, um, I, I, I see a lot of folks where maybe they actually go on that full-time RV spree and go hit the road and, uh, and really uh, uh, sow their oats, you might say. <laughs> and. And then when they feel like, okay, I've had enough of this living in an RV and this cramped uh, lifestyle, either going back to the house that they kept or maybe even look at buying a house or renting a house uh, in a new area that they prefer now that they've roamed the United States a little bit to go see what it's like. Believe me, if I lived in Washington the whole time, I would have never had an idea of what Central Oregon was like or what uh, Northern California looked like or what... You know, people say, oh, come to Quartzsite. And by the way, Quartzsite's a desert. And I don't care what you say, it's a desert. So I wasn't that thrilled. There's no water. There's no streams. There's no rivers. It's a desert. 
<laughs> so anyway, but a lot of people like it. Um, and of course, Arizona has a lot of desert stuff, but if you really get a chance to see Arizona, it has a lot to offer. I could go skiing an hour away from here. I can be up in the woods an hour away from here. I can be in some beautiful lavish uh, uh, re reservoirs and lakes. And so uh, at the same time, yes, it's a desert. <laughs> it's, but, uh, uh, it just depends on what part of Arizona you get hang out at. So, yeah, uh, I, I actually am I'm enjoying the fact that uh, uh, I know we get a lot of young folks that will listen to our show and get angry because they want to do the RV, RV freedom. And they don't, uh, at age 20 to 30, they want to go out there and, and not pay their dues. They just want to go out there and live the life. And I am not necessarily disagree with that because uh, I wanted that with my daughter where she uh, enjoyed her 20s before she got hooked up and locked in as a wife. For, uh, but she's a career person. And she actually did that. She waited till she was like uh, 30 before she got married. And so I feel great that she got to enjoy being a woman and, and doing some things that she couldn't necessarily do. She settled down right away. And she got her, just got her degree finished. And, uh, um, and my son did the same thing. Uh, uh, he did six years in the Air Force, did quite a few things before he settled down. So I'm very pleased that they had a chance to enjoy their 20s. No, they didn't do any traveling uh, as far as RVing. But all my kids were very worldly and, and did get to see the world before they settled down. And that's why my in, daughter ended up in Arizona and my son ended up in, uh, he was over in um, East Coast, but now he ends up, uh, ended up uh, career-wise in Idaho. So yeah, um, tough stuff, tough decisions. The big thing I think is really clear, RVing is different for everyone. And age is a big factor. And, of course, uh, you've heard me talk about lots of time on the show. My biggest concern that uh, gives a, RVing a bad name is folks that go out there and or there's even people I've seen comments where I want to RV. I'm retiring, but I need your support. I need you to send me money. And, um, of course, the, uh, the phrase that people use is e-begging. And there's nothing wrong with some of that. Like if you are doing videos and you got products you use and you talk about the product and then put a link down to Amazon where they get a commission, um, nothing wrong with that. Um, it, and as long as you're doing professional and not kind of making it sound like you got to buy this thing because it helps support me and my partner as we're traveling the world. Uh, my car is broke down. Uh, buy my stickers and all that kind of stuff. Um, some of it's really obvious and it just makes me sick and uh, um, however there's a lot of great channels out there that have uh, 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 programs like that they're you know working with Amazon and some other kind of uh, affiliate marketing and there's others out there that are uh, um, selling products that they've made or books that they've written and that's awesome stuff and they and they put a lot of work behind that and so it helps support their travels and uh and then there's Patreon, too, where you, if they're really making videos and producing things you enjoy, you can support them by contributing a few bucks towards every video they produce. And it's kind of like a tip jar. And so, and that's kind of the concept we use here at uh, RV Travel Buddy, RV Travel Quest, and also RV Talk Radio is uh, uh, occasionally we get tips and stuff, and we appreciate it. And uh, But it's, you know, uh, you certainly never hear us saying this stuff wouldn't exist without that. So anyway, um, and we get uh, advertising dollars and stuff uh, from our shows and stuff like that. So it's a business. That's just how it is. Uh, registered business of uh, Cutting Edge Enterprises, LLC. And uh, we pay taxes. We're the real thing. So, um, but yeah, a lot of the ones out there, they're doing it under the table and uh, you know they're not paying taxes and and like and for when you have a legitimate business and you see people doing that it makes you a little perturbed <laughs> but uh, but it still comes down to RVing is def definitely different for everyone and so with that note I need to wrap this show up I want to thank everybody for the great feedback this week that we had for this show 
And uh, uh, please take the time to comment or send us uh, messages. We appreciate it. So I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Thank you very much for listening. And if you haven't done it yet, at least give it a try. Get yourself an RV. See you next week. Bye now.